When you think of a doctor, you think of respect and knowledge, right? You think of some dude driving to work in a Mercedes and coming back to a McMansion. Is that really true though? Let's crunch some numbers and get to the bottom of this. Meet Mike and Adam. Up until college graduation, Mike and Adam were basically the same person. They were born in the same hospital and delivered by the same old grumpy nurse. They even sucked on the same old pair of tits. They both graduate college with the same degree, but that's where the similarities end. Mike takes a plunge into medicine while Adam immediately joins the workforce. To get into medical school, you have to have medically related experiences on your resume. Unfortunately, pre-meds are desperate and employers know this and so pays them accordingly. After college, when I took on a job as a clinical technician slash research assistant, I was paid 15 bucks an hour and lived this dank lifestyle for two years. After living expenses, paying for the MCAT, the entrance exam for medical school, enrolling in a review course and buying study books, I don't think I was able to really save any money. Some people even pay 30k to enroll in post back programs specifically to fast track them into medical school. Adam, on the other hand, is not so desperate. According to the National Association of College and Employers, the average salary of a college graduate these days is 68000 For the purposes of our discussion, we are going to assume he always saves 30% of his after-tax income. Thus, if Adam lives in New York, he makes an after-tax income of $50,162 and is able to save about 30 k over two years. Where's Med Mike's net worth after two years? Zero plus or minus 30k in the hole, depending on if he did the post back thing. But at least he's now ready to apply to medical school. To start, he first pays 28 bucks for the MSAR, the Online Medical School Admissions Requirement Database. From it, he gets a list of schools and pays $170 to send his first application, and an additional $40 for each additional school. Since students typically apply to 16 schools on average, that's 770 bucks right there. Now, each school is pretty darn needy. Not only does Med Mike have to write separate essays explaining why he loves each one in particular, he has to talk about why each school is its own unique snowflake. Hint, they're not. Why Med Mike would uniquely fit with their specific system, and why they should choose Med Mike. And of course, he has to give them money too. Those fees range from 75 to 100 per school. For 16 schools, that's another 1600 right there. But that's not all. They need his college transcripts too, and that costs $10 a pop. For 16 schools, that's 160. Mike isn't perturbed by his hemorrhaging wallet because he's too busy squealing in excitement. Oh look, an interview just popped up in his inbox. Now the cost of interviewing will vary depending on where you are, where the school is, and how you're going to get there. But unless you're doing online interviews, transportation and hotel costs add up. These costs can rack up to 500 to 1000 per school. Let's assume out of the 16 schools he's applied to, half want to interview Mike. Based on the lower estimate of 500 each, that's $4000 out the window. Mike's too busy to notice how broke he is because he's too busy squealing in excitement yet again. Oh look, an acceptance letter just popped up in his inbox. Many schools offer what's called a second look weekend. Here, accepted students are given a chance to come back for a weekend-like retreat. You get to see who your potential classmates are and get a feel for the campus overall. Mike decides to compare two schools and goes to two of these events for $500 each. $1,000 again lost forever. While he's deciding between his two dream schools, he's told that in order to hold a spot of acceptance until May, he'll have to pay a non refundable deposit. Mike rushes to make the decision because holding two deposits simultaneously costs another $1,000. In case you were wondering, the total damage for Mike up to this point is $9,858. But who cares? What's $10,000 when you're finally in medical school? Especially considering you're about to pay an arm and leg to be there. For example, if Med Mike went to Louisiana State University School of Medicine in Shreveport and was a resident of Louisiana, his degree would cost $234,884. If Med Mike decided to go to Yale, his degree would cost $403,740. And that's not even considering the mental, emotional, and opportunity costs of surviving these four years, nor the therapy required for the insane amounts of studying. Looking at data published by the WAMC, after scholarships and financial aid, the median debt students owe is around $200,000. 73% of all doctors graduate with debt. Assuming the loan was borrowed over four years in federal direct loans from the Department of Education, 
at an annual interest rate of about 6%, the WAMC estimates that more than $231,000 would be needed to pay back both interest and principal once the repayment period begins. The number can obviously be larger the longer you delay. But wait, there's more. MedMic will need to take three more standardized tests before graduation. These are known as the USMLE, Step 1, Step 2, and Step 3, each with their own respective fees. Altogether, that's going to cost a minimum of $2,235. Of course, we haven't even factored in the fees you pay for study courses in question banks, another $1,500. One thing even more important to your learning and at a fraction of the cost is Skillshare, this video's kind sponsor. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry pros from film, design, freelance, productivity, and more, no matter if you're in school or already working. Lifelong learning should be an everyday habit. I just took Cody Parrott's class on crafting a successful paid newsletter to up my own marketing know-how. There, I learned about the ways she incentivizes paid subscriptions with lead magnets, targeted email campaigns, and personalized class offerings. And that's just one class. Skillshare is constantly upgrading their platform. They've added three new class topics and created a new and improved class system that tailors recommendations to your specific goals. What are you waiting for? The first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Let's get back to Adam in the meantime. It's six years post college now. What has he been up to? Oh look, he got a promotion. His salary is now 75K a year. The year after that, he leverages his new title and switches to a new company with a salary jump to 90K and then 100K thereafter. Remember, Adam is as hardworking and diligent as Med Mike. Adam could have killed medical school, but instead chose a different path. Because he's kept the same savings rate of 30%, six years after college, his net worth is now more than $100,000. Luckily, he hasn't just been storing that money under his mattress, he's been investing investing in low-cost index funds, growing at an annual rate of about 10% a year, the average growth of the stock market. Thus, the 107k he saved has actually grown by an extra 35k. So, here's the current score. Six years after college, MedMike is in the hole by $244,593. But who cares? He has an official MD now, a golden ticket to a life of McMansions and yachts, right? With Adam's net worth of $134,939, the wealth gap between Med Mike and Adam has stretched to $379,532.48. He'll catch up soon though, right? Hold up, Mike can't practice medicine independently yet. He has to complete residency, and unfortunately for him, getting into residency is even more difficult than getting into medical school. And it too requires its own convoluted application and interview process. To submit residency applications, you have to use ERAS, which yes, requires even more fees. According to ERAS data, the median number of applications sent out in 2023 was 78 for US applicants and 144 for international graduates. You thought applying to 16 med schools was tough? Imagine sending out close to 150 applications for something and still being rejected all 150 times. Yes, that happens a lot. According to the American Medical Association, less than 10% of US medical graduates do not match into any residency program at all. It's even worse for international students. So sending 78 applications is going to cost $1,767 plus another $80 fee to send your US MLE scores electronically. Keep your wallet out because interviews are about to start. This means more trips, hotel stays, and plane tickets. According to recent data, the median number of interviews for applicants who successfully match into residency is 14. Based on the lower end estimate of 500 per interview, Mike is about to cough up another $7,000. Now, Mike has to register for yet another random thing. This time, it's called the NRMP, the National Resident Matching Program, an algorithm that matches applicants with their respective residency programs residency hospitals. And yes, of course, there are fees for this too. The current standard fee to register is $70, which includes up to 20 hospitals. Since the median number of interviews is 14, luckily that's all Mike pays. Otherwise, it's an additional $30 per hospital. Putting it all together now, Mike is in the hole by 253,000. Since Adam has a net worth of almost 135,000, the wealth gap between them is now $388,449.48. But it's okay, because Mike is finally in residency and can finally start making money. 
Holy smokes, Mike hasn't seen actual cash in years. He can barely wait to deposit that fat paycheck. Oh, did I say fat paycheck? What I actually meant to say was minimum wage. To truly understand the absurdity of residency, you have to meet the guy who invented the concept, Dr. William Halstead, a dude who expected his doctors and training to live in the hospital and be on call 365 days of the year, basically taking on the majority of all patient care. Hence, why these junior doctors are called residents. Some say he created this arrangement to cover for his own deterioration in skill and it was widely known he was addicted to cocaine and morphine. Yes, you heard that right. A cocaine-fueled mad doctor invents a pyramid scheme of underpaid, underslept, overworked residents to work underneath him to ensure he doesn't have to do anything himself. He collects the real fat paycheck and pays those underneath him minimum wage. This is the backbone of the modern medical education system. Because of some pretty egregious malpractice mistakes ascribed to resident exhaustion, residents can now only work up to 80 hours a week. If the average resident makes about $64,321, the calculated hourly wage for a resident is then a whopping $15.46, a number lower than minimum wage in many states. Guess how much a hospital janitor makes? According to ZipRecruiter, 16 bucks an hour. Is that not insane? After four years of college, four years of medical school, mountains of debt, testing, and fees, you come out of the system finally able to make minimum wage? Not for one or two years, for the next three to six years, because that's how long residencies take. Oh, and yes, in order to prevent anyone from complaining, the system artificially limits admission into this pyramid scheme. This ensures those who are accepted are too scared to say anything due to the fear of losing their spot. This ancient system hasn't changed much from when that cocaine doc first created it. It's no wonder the suicide rate among doctors is more than double the general population. If that wasn't depressing enough, let's calculate the wealth gap now after four years of residency. How much is Adam worth now? He's been steadily going at it in his career. Assuming he gets an average yearly raise of about 3.5% and another promotion that puts him at $200,000 at the year 10 mark while keeping his savings rate at the 30% mark with index funds, his net worth will have grown to $263,000. Assuming MedMike exhibits the same behaviors as Adam, gets a yearly raise of 3.5% and puts 30% of his resident salary into index funds too, he ends up with about 70 k by the time residency is done. Subtract that from his debt of 253510 gives him a net worth of negative $184,510. Putting it all together, the wealth gap between MedMike and Adam is now almost half a million dollars. That's okay though, right? Because MedMike is about to catch up now that he's out of residency. Let's say his annual salary jumps immediately to $300,000, $100,000 more than Adam's. To make the subsequent calculation simple, let's say no one gets any more raises, with Med Mike making 100k more than Adam every single year for the rest of his life, when will he catch up to Adam? Let's figure it out. Again, same assumptions as before. 30% savings rate always invested in an index fund growing at 10% a year. Let's do Mike first. After taxes, Med Mike's 300k salary turns into about 184k take home. 30% of that is around 55k. If he dumps all 55k into paying off his loans year after year, it'll take him 4 years to pay down the 200k loan. That means it'll take him 14 years after college to finally get back to a net worth of zero. Think about that for a second. A newborn baby has a net worth of zero the moment he's born. Mike is now worth as much as a newborn baby. After 14 years of hardship, he can finally grow his wealth. At year 20, now having been a full-time doctor for 10 years straight, saving $55,000 a year, his net worth will have grown to around $370,000 pretty good, right? What's Adam's net worth now at year 20? Almost $1.3 million, a gap of almost 1 million. You may be thinking to yourself, how is that possible? To make a long story short, it's because Adam's money has been compounding the entire time year after year for almost 20 years now. In the end, as you shall soon see, nothing beats keeping your money in the market. If you don't believe me, let's extend this simulation another 24 years to when both are 65 years old. Using this nifty future value calculator, we can input exactly what we want to calculate. We put in our starting amount, the interest rate of 10%, how much savings are deposited,
calculated each year and how many years you want to go and bam at the ripe old age of 65 adam is sitting on almost 16 million dollars while mike only has 8.5 now of course both dudes are going to be just fine but look at that Becoming a doctor actually cost Mike a lifetime difference of $8 million, something that is literally only going to get larger with time. In other words, Mike will never catch up to Adam, not in this lifetime, not in the next, not even when the entire universe explodes at the end of all infinity. Now, of course, if you're excited to be a doctor, don't let this persuade you one way or another. People always told me, if you want to make as much money as possible, becoming a doctor isn't the path to take. I never really understood the significance of this until I sat down to run these calculations. And on top of that, you're sacrificing the best years of your life for more than a decade of training and subjugating yourself to an outdated minimum wage residency system that messes with your sleep and your sanity. And you wake up at night in the middle of it all, you can't help but ask, what the hell? Why am I doing this? If you have a good answer despite all of that, then yes, my friend, put on that white coat and let's do this. At any rate, I hope this video was helpful. If you want ideas and stories just like this, but in article form, sign up for my Substack. Otherwise, if you want digestible productivity tips sent to your inbox, sign up for the official Spoon Fed Ideas newsletter. If you want your very own custom made character doodle to be part of all future video scenes I draw, then please join these fine folks and become a Patreon member. You can be yourself, a dog, or even a rock. Possibilities are endless. And finally, as always, best way to support the channel is to subscribe. Go tell your friends, your grandma, and your pet hamster. Smell you later.